Hey guys, welcome back. Finally, after a long couple of months, I am checking out the telescope which I got from lightinthebox.com. This is the Phoenix F360-50, uh, F360-50 being the focal length which is 360 and 50 millimeters being the diameter of the lens inside. Now this is a cheap entry level telescope which you can get if you're interested in astronomy or spying on your neighbor. Just kidding, that's creepy. You can get it uh, for $29 on lightinthebox.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Let's unbox it and dive into it right away. If gadget reviews, DIY projects and life hacks are your thing, then consider subscribing to my booth and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the action. Inside the box we have quite a few components so let's go through them one by one. First is the telescope, uh, then we have a 34 cm tall tripod, a nut and bolt to mount the scope onto the tripod, two eyepieces, one is a Hugen 20 mm. Uh, this is the focal length of the eyepiece by the way as you can see here written as H20mm and the second is an H6mm eyepiece. You can see I have wrapped some electrical tape around both of them and I'll let you know why in a while. Finally in the box we have an erecting eyepiece uh, with an additional zoom of 1.5x. If you're new to telescopes let me give you a brief intro. The main body of the telescope usually has a lens or a mirror or both like this one. There is an objective lens in the front and there is a mirror inside this part. It uses these mirrors and lens to gather light from an object to form an image on the mirror and then the eyepiece will magnify it so you can observe details in the image. The eyepiece goes in here and you can tighten it with the screw on the side. Now on the telescope body you can see the focal length mentioned is 360 millimeters. To calculate how much magnification you are getting from the eyepiece, simply divide the focal length of the telescope by the focal length of the eyepiece. For example we have a 20 millimeters eyepiece, so our total magnification for this eyepiece will be 360 divided by 20 which is 18x also called as 18 power. And for this eyepiece which is labeled 6 millimeters, the magnification will be 60x. You can also move the telescope sideways and up and down to help you focus on an object. Once you have the whole thing set up, you can get down to business simply by peeping into the eyepiece. Now you won't see a crisp image right away. You have to adjust the focus by turning any of these two wheels back and forth until you have a sharp picture. Now the real question was how do I show you guys what I'm seeing? So I ordered this little contraption from another website for about $10. This allows you to mount any smartphone onto any scope. It is super sturdy and has a very good build quality. You can uh, place your phone in it and align the camera through the center of the viewing window. Once done, place the eyepiece in there and tighten it. And once again make sure it is in line with the camera lens. Now when I did this the first time I realized the eyepiece was still moving freely. So I went ahead and wrapped a good couple of layers of electrical tape on it and that did the trick. Now it is a tight fit and I can uh, mount it easily on the telescope. Now let's have a look at something. Let's go for the top of that building which is a good couple of hundred meters away and I'm just going to aim at the top peak of the building. First with the 18x lens. Alright, that's uh, pretty okay, not that great. Uh, the edges are all blurry. I'm lowering the exposure a little bit to get a little clear image. Actually I would suggest you use it without the phone. I am noticing the phone is not able to do justice to the picture clarity. It is much more clear when viewed directly. I am just using the phone to give you some perspective. I even tried applying the 2x optical zoom from my phone just for fun. And I have to say the zoom is pretty impressive. Now I will try the same thing with the 60x lens. Now this lens is labeled moon and it also has a green coated piece of glass or I think clear plastic. Uh, and as you can see this is just a piece of glass and not a lens. Uh, and this is usually there to reduce glare and improve contrast when viewing something very brightly lit like the moon for example. However, I am going to remove it for now and see how it looks without it. As you can see this time there aren't that many blurry edges and the image is pretty clear. I used the legs of the tripod to move the scope up and down slightly which is uh, enough to scan the peak of the building at this magnification. Moving the scope itself causes a lot of shaking. I also tried taking a short video with the green tint on and as you can see uh, it is better without it for now. Anyways I am just going to run a couple of samples for you while I continue with my script. Now this is a cheap telescope so don't expect much from the build quality. Pointing it to something specific can take a while and that is because there is a little bit of a play especially in the eyepiece area. 
at high levels of magnification, this is not really a good thing. If you're gonna view it directly with your eye, it's fine, but uh, with the added weight of the phone and the phone mount, it can become quite fidgety and difficult to focus. The optics are not of the best quality, but they do a pretty good job. The H in H20mm stands for Hugen, which is one type of eyepiece out of about four or five different ones, and these ones are on the lower end of performance and price. Some telescopes will show you the image upside down, so you'll need an erector eyepiece to make the image upright. Luckily, this one has diagonal mirrors, so you don't need that. The image, however, is horizontally flipped. The erector eyepiece that comes with it basically just gives an additional 1.5 times zoom. You can place uh, it in like this and then the eyepiece goes on top of this. So basically the 18x becomes 27x and the 60 becomes 90x. With this added, it becomes even more difficult to take a stable shot with the phone. However, when this was shipped to me, it was opened in the customs. And that's where the instruction manual disappeared and I'm assuming something went missing from this eyepiece as well. Cause I have tried every single way to mount it and haven't been able to get a clear image. It is simply a blur. I even unscrewed it and turned the lens inside the other way but still nothing. If you guys have any idea on how to make it work, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, now that you have viewed a couple of samples with the 18 and 60x, let's move to the star of the show. Or shall I say the moon of the show. Now the sky was a little cloudy and the moon uh, was a day short of full and this is the best I could do. This is just with the phone to give you a starting point to compare with. Now this is with the 18x. Now it took a lot of time to align the phone perfectly and uh, then I just let it stay there while the moon slowly drifted on its course. Uh, once again I repeat the phone camera is not doing justice to what I can see directly. It is much more enjoyable without it. Once the moon moves into the upper quadrant, then you can see the craters on the bottom right corner of the moon become sharper. At least in the phone it is clear now, I'm seeing it that way since the beginning. I tried to apply the 10x digital zoom on my phone and this is what I got. Not that great really. I tried taking an image and then sharpened it a bit and it turned out pretty cool. I even put it on my Insta page. By the way, if you're still not following, you should really do so, you know. Anyways, this is with the 60x. I have to admit, even though the magnification is greater with this eyepiece, it is not as clear as with the first one, especially with the green coating on. Somehow I forgot to take another shot without the green coating. But I will do it very soon on my YouTube stories, so keep an eye out for that. If you pay close attention and wait for a couple of seconds, you can see the moon moving in real time. And this is not a sped up video. All in all, I kinda like it. The build quality is not that good. You can feel the cheap plastic and the lightweight tripod. Some of the parts are fidgety and getting a stable shot needs some getting used to. I'm not even sure if it is actually giving the amount of magnification it says. But based on the craters I can see on the moon, and that too with the 18x, I'm gonna say I like it. And at $29, the price to performance ratio is reasonable. It is a nice gift for kids and people who are just starting or getting interested in astronomy, and it won't break the bank either. I'll leave a link in the description box below in case you wanna check it out. That's it for now guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below and subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, life hacks, and facts. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Instructables. All the links are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.